guys, this is your Tita in China and today we're back with a new skincare video. Today we're going to talk about vitamin C and what it does for our skin and is it really worth it to add a vitamin C product into your skincare routine. But if you're new here, welcome! My name is Emeline and I am your Tita in China. I come up with skincare related and China related videos. So if that's something that's interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you will know the next time I will upload a new video. Vitamin C has been touted as a skincare essential because of all of the things that it claims it can do. It is a natural ingredient that is always present in our skin and is needed by our skin to provide collagen and elastin. Also brightens our skin and there are also claims that it can give you a glow. And if we're going to let marketers get away with it, they'll probably say that vitamin C is going to pay your bills if you're going to use it at the right pH and at the right concentration. But is vitamin C really all that? And what vitamin C product do I recommend? that you use. Vitamin C is an important vitamin in our body. We get it from our diet such as citrus fruits, green leafy, and colorful vegetables in general. In school, we learned that a deficiency in vitamin C can lead to a disease called scurvy, which is something that was observed in soldiers or sailors that would not have access to fruits and vegetables for long periods of time as they were journeying over the sea. But in skin, vitamin C is most important because it produces collagen or it helps the body produce collagen and elastin. Collagen and elastin are very important components of the skin because they hold on to water which keeps your skin plump and hydrated. Also, vitamin C, just like a lot of vitamins, are antioxidants. And that means that they protect us from oxidative stress. Oxidative stress happens when there's more free radicals in our body than antioxidants. And if there are too many free radicals in our body, it can lead to tissue damage or even in this case, skin tissue damage. Now, free radicals are a natural byproduct of metabolism. As long as your body is alive, as long as the, the processes keep on going, there will be free radicals produced by our body. But the free radical levels in our body can also increase if we expose ourselves to pollution, to toxins, smoking, and even UV rays. Free radicals damage cells because they themselves are unstable. They need, they are missing an electron. So what they do is they go to another cell, they steal an electron from that other cell which causes that other healthy cell to become unhealthy and oxidized. So what happens is that cell that has been damaged will now go on and damage other cells and so on and so forth. So antioxidants combat the effect of free radicals by donating that electron that the free radical is looking for. So instead of the free radical getting an extra electron from a healthy skin cell, it's going to get it from antioxidants, leaving the healthy skin intact. So say for example, this is the free radical and it is missing an electron here. What's going to happen is this free radical is now going to get an electron from another molecule so now the free radical is complete it's happy but this molecule that the free radical took that electron from is now unstable and is starting to oxidize so what it's going to do is that it's going to also scavenge other molecules so that it can get their electron and the process is going to create damaged skin cells and damaged tissue this is so basic but we don't have a prop button Free radicals in the body and in your skin specifically are like those toxic boyfriends and girlfriends that we all have had in the past. Yung tipong hinahanap nila kung ano yung kulang, ano yung pangit, kung anong hindi maganda sa kanila, hinahanap nila yon sa magiging boyfriend or girlfriend nila. Pagkatapos, kung hindi nila mahanap, babaguhin at babaguhin ka nila. Tapos, yung ending, pareho kayong sira. When in the first place, wala namang talagang problema doon sa boyfriend or girlfriend na nahanap niya. It's just that, ang dami niyang issue sa sarili niya, ang dami niyang problema, unstable siya. Kaya, nagiging unstable na rin yung mga nadidikitan niya. So, ang ending pareho kayong sira. Not good. We don't like free radicals in our body and ayaw rin natin ng free radical na tao. If none of your relationships work and your exes seem to move on into better and healthier relationships, baka ikaw na yung free radical. Baka kailangan mag-reflect. Baka kailangan mag-meditate para isipin kung anong kailangan pag-uwi sa sarili mo. Make the necessary internal changes. Don't be a free radical. Be an antioxidant and give glow to people. Anyway, so oxidative stress can lead to dullness, dryness, and even signs of aging. And vitamin C has been proven to work well to reverse the damage that was caused by UV rays. However, since we do not produce our own vitamin C, we need to keep topping off our vitamin C stores. And vitamin C does get depleted quite quickly. That's why we need to constantly top up our vitamin C reserves in our body. So the studies that have shown that vitamin C is promising or even effective against ultraviolet light damage 
damage is the reason why brands have come up with different kinds of vitamin C products. And because vitamin C does get depleted, it makes sense to add or to supplement vitamin C products into our skincare routine so that we can top up our vitamin C reserves. However, doesn't mean that it makes sense that you're going to get the effects that you want. The most studied type of vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid, and this is pure vitamin C. Honestly speaking, the studies are super promising, they're quite exciting, it's just that there isn't enough data yet because we haven't been studying it for long enough yet for us to actually reach a conclusive decision as to whether or not we should be adding vitamin C into our skincare routine. But that doesn't stop marketers from taking the good side or the good information from the studies and putting it into their marketing campaign and selling it to you as the next big thing. And there are even fewer studies about the efficiency and the effectivity of vitamin C derivatives. The vitamin C derivatives include ascorbyl glucoside, ascorbyl palmitate, another one is tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate, and a magnesium derivative of vitamin C is magnesium ascorbyl palmitate. And there are many others. Derivatives of vitamin C are all over the market and usually they are altered versions of vitamin C to make them more light stable or water stable because L-ascorbic acid vitamin C in its pure form is highly unstable and you cannot mix it into water it degrades really quickly and you cannot expose it to UV light because it also causes it to quickly degrade. These are all very popular vitamin C derivatives but none of them have been studied in depth. The studies that we do have what do they say? There are three main benefits of adding vitamin C into your skincare routine and number one most important is that it helps produce collagen and elastin. Vitamin C seems to be very effective in brightening as well in helping even out skin tone especially when you have problems with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Vitamin C seems to work well with sunscreen because hand in hand they can give you even more sun protection. However, there are five things about vitamin C that we have really are not really all that good. Number one, it is highly unstable and it is difficult to formulate especially if you want to add water into your formulation because it quickly degrades in water. It also degrades really quickly when exposed to UV light so it needs to be stored in either an amber glass or in opaque containers. Number two, because vitamin C cannot be formulated in water reliably, vitamin C that is formulated with oil and silicone don't really have a very pleasant texture. Because vitamin C in its pure form is a crystalline substance, it's very, it, it leaves that gritty, very unpleasant feeling on the skin. Number three, the pH level that vitamin C likes to be in is quite low, which can lead to irritation in sensitive types. Number four, vitamin C derivatives such as ascorbyl glucoside are not as effective as pure vitamin C. So while theoretically it makes sense, we don't really know, and you might actually be investing in a product that at the end of the day, will not do anything for your skin. And number five, because it is overhyped, vitamin C is one of the most popular skincare ingredients as of the moment. Vitamin C products tend to be really expensive and overpriced. So generally, vitamin C is something that is good to have in your skincare routine, but it's definitely not an essential. And it really shouldn't take the place of many other evidence-based skincare products. Oh, but what if you're the type to say, ah, hindi, tita, I really want to use vitamin C in my skincare routine. Give me product recommendations now. Fine, fine, okay, I will give you product recommendations. When looking for vitamin C products at work, make sure that you get L-ascorbic acid. This is 100% vitamin C. By far, this is the product or the ingredient that has the most um, studies backing it up. Start with concentrations between 8 to 10% if you're a beginner and up to 20 to 30% if you're a pro. Look for a pH level that is about 3.5 because this is where vitamin C wants to be in and it is most active at that pH. And because it is not a skincare essential, please do not splurge on vitamin C products. Find one that is quite affordable. The first one is the ordinary 8% ascorbic acid and 2% alpha arbutin. I have spoken about this product before and if you want to watch it, the Ordinary Skincare Review is right here. This formula contains no water, it contains no oil. The carrier substance is a glycol called propanediol and it actually helps your skin absorb the active ingredients. So it's not going to clog your pores, it's very effective or it's very safe even for people suffering with acne or with oily skin. The next one also is from The Ordinary, it is the Vitamin C Suspension 30% in silicone. 
silicone. This is not a beginner product. This product is very strong, okay? So please proceed with caution. Having said that, the product, because it's in silicone, is also shelf-stable because you know, it doesn't have water. But the texture of this product, because it is with silicone, is actually quite nice. It really masks the grittiness of the vitamin C very well. So if you're looking for a higher concentration vitamin C that is not oily, this is definitely an option. But before you hit the buy now button, ask yourself, why do you want to use vitamin C? Why is this so interesting to you? What are the skin issues that you want to address? Is it hyperpigmentation? Is it signs of aging? Is it for sun protection? There are other more evidence-based skincare ingredients out there that are more stable and easy to add into your skincare routine compared to vitamin C. If you're struggling with signs of aging, retinoids are actually the gold standard for anti-aging, not vitamin C. So instead of adding vitamin C, focus first on adding a retinoid into your skincare routine and see how your skin likes it. If you're looking for something to fade hyperpigmented spots or an even skin tone, niacinamide should be your go-to or butin should be your go-to. Maybe even hydroquinone if that's something that is approved by your derm. These three ingredients are more suitable, are more evidence-based in fading hyperpigmented spots than vitamin C. Sunscreen is the most essential thing when it comes to sun protection instead of antioxidants in your skincare. What's more important is that you use sunscreen on a daily basis, you apply the right amount, and reapply consistently. You can also find vitamin C in many other products such as Crave Beauty sunscreens up here if you want to know more about that sunscreen. So there's really no need for you to add a dedicated vitamin C product. It's easy to jump onto the hype and to buy whatever any other influencer is telling you to buy. However, you need to be really mindful not only for the sake of your budget but also to save you from frustration. I personally know for a fact considering my marketing background especially in cosmetic marketing that we push products to you guys not because because you need it or that it's effective but because we know that it's going to make us money. Remember that vitamin C is a non-drug cosmetic meaning that we don't have to prove to the FDA or we don't have to prove to any regulatory body that this product is actually effective in doing whatever it is that we claim it to do. We just formulate things so that it's going to pass government regulations for safety. And when I say government regulations for safety, I mean like mercury levels and so on. Not necessarily effectivity. And because non-drug cosmetics don't need to show proof that it actually works, we as consumers need to be super smart about how we choose our products. Because honestly speaking, no one has our back. And no, the brand's probably not gonna give you a refund. So that's it guys, that's our video for today. I hope that you found this helpful and informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share this your friends who are also skincare buffs. Thank you for watching guys. See you next time. Bye! Shots again!